Welcome to Breakfast at Nine. A place to be family, a place to make friends, and a place to explore faith. And our hashtags for this week are hashtag other things, hashtag angry, and hashtag three days. This week, how to make an entrance. Good morning, everyone. Do you ever get angry? I do sometimes, and my friends will usually try to calm me down when I do, which makes them nice friends, I think. Especially if I'm getting angry for no good reason or about something that isn't important. I expect we all do that, don't we? But you know, it's not always wrong to get angry. I remember a few months ago when all the lambs were running and jumping about in the field that one poor little lamb was being treated meanly by the others and was very upset. They wouldn't let her join in the games they were playing and were calling her names. Well, it is wrong to bully others, so I ran straight over and I told the lambs that what they were doing was wrong and hurtful. They could see I was angry then, but, you know, it did work because they did play nicely together after. And I hope those lambs who were doing the bullying realised what they had done was wrong and learned from it. Well, have you ever found your mummy or daddy get cross with you for doing something dangerous like running out in the road without looking for traffic. They get angry because they care and they don't want you to get hurt. Even Jesus got angry, you know. In our reading this morning, we see him get very angry with money changers in the temple because what they were doing was wrong. Jesus was right to be angry with them. Hmm. Listen to the reading and the talk carefully and you will see how Jesus showed his anger and learn why he did. Well, Enjoy the rest of breakfast at nine. Bye! See you next week! Jesus goes to the temple. It was almost time for the Passover festival. So Jesus went to Jerusalem. There in the temple he found people sitting, um, selling cattle, sheep and pigeons and also the money changers sitting at their tables. So he made a whip for cords and drove all the animals out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He overturned the tables of the money changers and scattered their coins. And he ordered those who were sold the pigeons to take them out of here, stop making my father's house in marketplace. His disciples remembered that the scripture says, my devotion to your house. O oh God burns in me like a fire. The Jewish authorities came back at him with a question. What miracle can you perform to show us that you have the right to do this? 
Jesus answered, Tear down this temple, and in three days I will build it again. Are you going to build it again in three days? They asked him. It has taken 46 years to build this temple. But the temple Jesus was speaking about his body. So when he went, when he was raised from the death, the disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and what Jesus had said. Jesus, knowledge of human nature. While Jesus was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed him in him as they saw the miracles he performed. But Jesus did not trust himself to them because he knew them all. There was no need for anyone to tell him about them because he himself knew what was in their hearts. So this morning, we find ourselves in Jerusalem again. It's the time of the Passover celebrations. I remember the Passover festival was a festival that the Jewish people celebrated every year to mark their escape from Egypt, uh, from Pharaoh and his troops. So it's the Passover festival and tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people are beginning to gather in and around Jerusalem to prepare for this celebration. And Jesus and his disciples are going to Jerusalem as well. Now when they get to the temple, they find that in addition to all the crowds, it is filled with money changers and people selling animals. Now we need to understand why these money changers and these people selling animals are there in the first place. To start with, there was a temple tax. There was a tax that had to be paid um, for every Jewish male over the age of 19. And the problem with that temple tax was that you couldn't just pay it in any old currency. It had to be paid in a currency called shekels. And in order to do that, you needed to change your Greek or your Roman coins or whatever you had, your currency, into the shekels. And that's what the money changes were there for. Now the reason why these animal vendors were in, in the temple was that um, animal sacrifice was part of the religious service that the people of Israel had to perform. Animals were there to um, be sacrificed to make good for the sins of the people. The problem was that you couldn't just bring any old animal to the temple to be sacrificed. No, these animals had to be free of any faults. Unfortunately, it was very likely that if you brought your own animal from home, your animal would be rejected because the people selling the animals wanted to make sure that their animals were being bought at the temple instead. Now, generally, that wasn't a problem. But the problem was that it was the time of Passover. And what happened at Passover was that the money changers would increase their rates disproportionately and that the animals were being sold at extortionate prices. It's a bit like going on holidays during the school holidays. Every parent will know that the prices skyrocket the moment that the school holidays um, are in force. And it is not dissimilar to this with the Passover festival and the charges that are being le levied for the money changes and for the animals being sold. The upshot of it all was that the temple had become a great big money-making machine. It was a money spinner for the priests, for those in charge. It was a money spinner for the money changers. It was a money spinner for the people selling the animals. And that is why Jesus gets so angry with the crowds. He doesn't get angry simply because they were there. He doesn't get angry because the temple was busy or even congested with all the people. No, 
The reason why he's getting angry is because of what they were doing and how they were doing it. Now remember what Sheep said earlier. It is okay to be angry for the right reason. And Jesus' reasons here are that the people who come to Jerusalem, who come to the temple to worship and serve God, are being taken advantage of. They're effectively being ripped off in today's terms. And that's why Jesus, in our text, calls the temple a marketplace. Some other translations call it a den of thieves or even a cave of robbers. What Jesus gets angry about is that the focus had shifted from God to the things being done in the temple, the things that are being sold. The very things that were meant to honour God and to worship him and to be a sacrifice had taken over focus and people's attention from God to the things. And the temple is being misused. It is no longer a place of prayer or contemplation, a place of drawing near to God. No, instead it has become a marketplace. It has become focused on the things, not on the creator of the things. So having cleared out the temple, Jesus gets challenged. The Jewish leaders say, well, show us a miracle then. Show us that you are indeed allowed to do this. And Jesus goes, I'll show you a miracle all right. You can tear this temple down and I can rebuild it in three days. And the people don't believe it. Because the temple at this point wasn't even finished. It had been being in the process of being built for 46 years and wasn't quite finished yet. And Jesus comes along and says, this temple can be torn down and I can rebuild it in three days. And the Jewish leaders simply don't get it. And neither do his disciples. Because we don't find out le until later in the text in verse 22 that they realize only until after Jesus' resurrection what he had meant at the time. So here are just a few thoughts for us to finish with. It's easy to let the things of this world crowd our vision with God. It's easy to get distracted by other things that may seem more important. It's easy to lose that intimate relationship with God that we can have through prayer, through reading his word. So it is good to have the occasional clear out, as it were, in our own hearts. Just as Jesus cleared out the temple of the money changers and of all the animals and the people selling them. So it's good for us to take stock every now and day and now and then. Take time to take time out to think contemplate where we are in our relationship with God and have a clear out of our hearts to refocus on the things that really matter, to refocus on God, to refocus on Jesus and what he's done for us on the cross so we can have a relationship with God. Because at the end of the day, what really matters aren't the things, it is the relationship that we have with God. Our Father in heaven, may your holy name be honoured. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need. Forgive us the wrongs we have done as we forgive the wrongs that others have done to us. Do not bring us to hard testing, but keep us safe from the evil one. Amen.
In Breakfast at Nine, in the introduction, we talk about it being a place uh, to be family, 
to make friends and to explore faith. And from very early on, uh, as Breakfast at Nine uh, started, we've had a family that had been a part of us, the Burns family. Now, in these recent weeks, uh, Pete has taken a job in Scotland and Carly and the family have moved to Scotland to follow him and the work and to uh, make a home there. So we just wanted to say from uh, all of the team at Breakfast at Nine and from the families and the others that have been a part of it, we wish you all the best uh, as you establish a, a new life again in Scotland, as you settle into your home and as the children settle back into school. So may God bless you. Uh, and we hope that uh, you will continue to follow us Sunday by Sunday in breakfast at nine uh, for the time that you're able. So to Pete and Carly uh, and to all the children from all of us here in Swindon, may God bless you and watch over you and have his hand upon you. Thank you. Take care. And now for our family news. It's good to talk. Have you any news to share with each other? What have you done or could you do for help or encourage someone this week? What are you celebrating today or in the coming week? Have you a birthday coming up? Is there anything you'd like us to pray for? You can contact us on email breakfast at freshbrook.org. Our thought for the week this week is how can we keep God at the centre of it all? And our verse is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from beginning to end. Coming next week. You should know better. May the Lord bless you and take care of you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look on you with favour and give you peace. Amen. Do you have questions about God and life, meaning and purpose? Would you love to explore answers with new friends in a safe environment? Why not try Alpha Online? You can email alpha at freshbrook.org to join the next course being run by this church. Friends are asking questions about God and life and faith and you'd love to invite them to join you in exploring answers from the Bible. Why not join Alpha Online at alpha at freshbook.org It's okay to admit you're in over your head someday